Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Hack, and in this video, you're checking out the evolution of the beginner knight build for Elden Ring, now morphed into an even more powerful strength and faith build I'm calling the Heretic. Similar to the Elden Ring knight build, we're using a great shield, great sword combo for amazing protection and survivability, along with great single target and AoE damage while we're in melee range but also with a powerful mix of Golden Order and Godskin incantations, combining aspects of the Paladin and Death Knight playstyle together. So if you're looking for an easy build for Elden Ring at level 100+, plus, that combines the best aspects of Sword and Shield strength builds with faith-based incantations for damage and support, then this is going to be the build for you. Let's jump right into the video. So there are a few starting classes in Elden Ring that will work best for a heretic style build. In my opinion, these are the Vagabond class and the Confessor class. Now if you've been following the beginner knight build before this, you know that I prefer the Vagabond for that setup because of that class's focus on vigor, strength, and endurance, all of which you'll need for our great sword and great shield combo. But since we will be shifting to a more focused based approach using incantations beyond level 100, the Confessor is actually a very good choice for this build in the long run as well, because you will need access to decent faith as well as mind stats in order to effectively cast incantations without having to constantly chug flasks to replenish your magic. Either way you go, you will want to push points into Vigor, Strength, and Endurance to start with. As we mentioned, melee builds do need a substantial health pool, and Strength along with Endurance and some very basic decks will be required to use the shield and greatsword options that we will need in order for this build to be successful. While your starting shield on the Confessor or Vagabond is pretty good with 100% physical damage negation, you will want to upgrade this soon to something better. For the Knight build, I recommended grabbing the Brass Shield from the Gatefront Ruins by farming the guards here. This shield will last you well into level 50 and beyond, where at that point you should then have enough strength and endurance to upgrade to a great shield for better all-around protection as well as a higher guard boost stat to reduce your stamina drain while blocking. Now one very easy option for this can be found near the capital outskirts, sold here by the Hermit Merchant for 5500 runes. This is the Distinguished Great Shield and this has very good overall stats. Of course we have the same 100% physical damage negation, but also good overall elemental stats and relatively high guard boost. This shield does require at least 32 strength to equip and has a fairly heavy weight coming in at 17 pounds, so you will need some high endurance, but that should not be a problem as you get higher in level. Now my favorite option though for this build is the Eclipse Crest Great Shield. Not only does the shield look amazing, it also has similar stats to the Distinguished Great Shield while being a full 2 pounds lighter, just 15 weight to this one. You can actually farm this shield early on in Lyurnia of the Lakes, just outside the Black Knife Catacombs, by killing the Mausoleum Knight until he drops it. Now finally, don't forget to upgrade your shields as much as possible. While not every upgrade does make a difference, every 3-4 to four upgrades will actually increase your total guard boost stat on that shield, and every bit of guard boost does improve your overall survivability. For the beginner knight build, I recommended picking up the Banished Knight's Halberd from Edgar over at Castle Morn. The plus 8 upgrade that comes on this before even unlocking Roundtable Hold is pretty powerful, so this will last you a good while. After that though, it's time to go full on Greatsword for this build. Greatswords in Elden Ring feel really balanced and powerful. Basic swing attacks here do AoE cleave damage, which is going to be great for hitting groups of enemies or even single enemies that typically will dodge normal attacks. These swings have a very wide radius, which makes them super effective. Jump attacks obviously are also going to be great for chunking health, especially when paired with the buffs and debuffs this build has access to. And then of course you have guard counters, using your shield to block and then counter with a quick R2 attack. This is basically your bread and butter damage combo on any strength focused shield build and it does massive posture damage on the setup, usually resulting in a critical hit. For this build, I'm using a unique greatsword, and it's one of my favorite weapons right now in Elden Ring, called the Sword of Milos. This disgusting weapon was fashioned from a giant's backbone, according to the description, but it also restores FP when killing an enemy, and has a unique weapon art that debuffs surrounding enemies' resistances, allowing your attacks to do more damage. On top of that, your basic attacks also cause blood loss buildup, which is just ridiculous. Two unique moves also come attached to this weapon. 
The first is a running R2 attack that's actually really helpful for closing the distance between you and enemies. The longer you hold down or charge R2, the further your attack travels. Then when attacking an enemy that's already debuffed by the weapon's unique Shriek of Milos weapon art, that same R2 will turn into a chunky three hit combo, which when timed correctly can do massive damage. The Sword of Milos is a quest reward that can be unlocked by talking with the Dung Eater in Round Table Hold, eventually freeing him from his prison in the capital city. At this point, you can choose to either kill him here or get invaded by him near the lake in the capital outskirts. Either way though, defeating him will earn you this sword. Just watch out for the giant crab killing you before the quest actually rewards you this drop. The Heretic build also utilizes some powerful incantations to buff and heal, as well as do damage. Now for this, any seal will do, but my favorites are gonna be the Claw Mark seal, because it has a fairly good incant scaling, meaning your damage incantations will do more damage. But another option that is great is called the Dragon Communion Seal. This has actually zero weight, making it great for this build. Since we already have heavy armor and a heavy shield and sword, the Dragon Communion Seal doesn't have quite as good of a scaling, but if you mostly use this build to cast buffs and heals, then scaling does nothing for those anyways. Now the main incantations I use here are Golden Vow, which increases our damage and defense, as well as Blessing's Boon, which provides a very nice heal over time effect. Both of these incantations really reflect the Paladin side of this build. And yes, there is a similar Golden Vow Ash of War you can use instead, but its duration is actually much shorter, so incantations are usually the best way to go. Now for our offensive incantations, I do really like Black Flame. This is a good medium range option for larger or more mobile targets, and you can charge the effect too for more damage. This incantation is especially good against certain types of enemies, including minor Erd Tree bosses who are actually weak to the damage type, and will also take massive damage from the dot effect itself. Finally, feel free to use whatever fourth incantation you want here, whether it's lightning or fire damage or some type of improved resistance buff. I basically keep that last spot flexible and switch it out depending on what I need. I'm a big fan of the armor set that I picked out for this build, and I feel like it really fits the look and feel of a Tarnished Knight or Heretic theme right down to the torn cape. This is the scaled armor set, which has a good balance of armor and poise compared to weight, so it's a great option for this particular build. Now you can unlock this armor set as part of the main quest in Volcano Manor, accept the quest here, and after defeating Old Knight Istvan, you'll receive the full set. Once you get higher level, you'll also be able to mix in some heavier pieces, things like Lionel's gloves or legs for even better poise. And by the way, poise on this build is very important, especially against bosses, allowing you to shrug off heavier attacks that would normally knock you down flat. Or if you're already blocking with your shield when hit, you'll actually roll backwards instead of getting knocked down completely. Speaking of armor, let's jump into the best talismans to further amplify this build's stats next. First, a must-have on this build in my opinion is the Great Jar Talisman. This increases your equip load by a whopping 19%, which is actually very needed on this setup, considering the combined weight of our Great Shield and Great Sword, as well as heavy armor. Along with this, we're using the Green Turtle Talisman for faster stamina regeneration. This is another essential talisman in my opinion, as you'll be able to get your block back up faster after your stamina bar is expended. And of course, guard counters and combos consume stamina as well, so this one is really needed if you don't want to run out of stamina all the time. The last two talismans are pretty flexible and can be swapped in and out depending on the situation. But for me, playing off the Paladin side of this build, I really like the Blessed Dew talisman, which gives you a health recovery bonus. This actually stacks with the Blessed Boon incantation that we saw earlier. So you can have strong health recovery on this build, which is a great option for clearing through dungeons or for completing longer boss fights instead of wasting your health flasks. And finally, some form of the Dragon Crest Shield or Great Shield Talisman will be very good for this build, as these substantially increase your physical damage negation. There are actually four versions in total of this talisman in Elden Ring, so wherever you are in the game, you should have access to at least one of them to greatly increase your survivability. This build can do well completely without summons if you want to, but if you want to be as effective as possible and make the game substantially easier, then summons are obviously a great way to do that. Now my top two summons for this setup that I switch out depending on the situation 
are the Jellyfish Ashes and the Redmain Knight Oga Ashes. First off, the Jellyfish is without a doubt the best early game summon available in Elden Ring. The mere fact that this summon floats above the ground, has lots of health, and can tank for you means it can help greatly when you need a break to either heal up or rebuff yourself, so it's very helpful in that regard. I still use the summon even now towards the end of the game, and I need a good distraction. It's really good for that. Now, for a more active summon that can quickly demolish a boss's poise meter, I like the Red Main Knight Oga. This summon has multiple types of attacks, including charges and sweeping arcs with his sword, shield bashes, and powerful ranged bow attacks, meaning he's always taking away health and applying pressure. There's also a really interesting synergy here because the Red Main Knight responds to roar buffs activated by the player with his own unique roar buff. This increases his damage every time, but also launches a unique gravity arrow strike attack once per summon. And the weapon art for our sword, the Sword of Milos, which is our main weapon, also counts as a war cry buff and can trigger this effect with the Red Main Knight. So mastering the synergy between Shriek of Milos and the Knight's own war cry is a pretty cool mini game that makes for a deadly duo combination against bosses. I love this build because it's so easy to set up and very simple to play. In most cases, you want to start with casting your buff incantations, including Golden Vow and Blessings Boon. These do last a good amount of time, and they often won't even wear off before a fight is already over, so they're great options. Now from there, you'll want to get into melee range and look for an opening so you can use that weapon art Shriek of Milos. This debuffs all enemies in the area and does a quick stagger as well. At this point, the enemies that you're facing off against should be fully debuffed. You are fully buffed with bonus damage and resistance. So it's time to engage. Make sure to use that shield to guard counter as often as possible. And if you know a boss well enough to find a 1-2 to two second opening, that's when you can use that R2 combo attack if they're already buffed with Shriek of Milos for that nice 3 hit combo. Remember that even if you get hit during the combo, your extra poise on this build should be enough to carry you through. Simply back off a bit if you need to, use a healing flask, or just wait for your health recovery to get you back up near full. For more medium or long range type of fights, Remember, you can switch to an incantation like Black Flame or Lightning Bolt for more ranged damage approach until the enemy gets close again. All in all, there's just a lot of options on this build. It is very tanky, tons of great healing and damage resistance, so it's very fun to play. But that is it for this updated version of the Knight build slash Heretic build for Elden Ring. If you enjoyed this video or you found it informative, be sure to crush that like button and let me know in the comments section what other types of Elden Ring builds you want to see next. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there, and I will see you around in the next video.